Hi, Robin from Play Move Improve. This is a little bit of a different backdrop to usual. This is actually my backyard. I thought I'd quickly jump in and say hello while my therapy puppy Max is having a little snooze. I just wanted to show you my latest play reflective practice question. So I've been running small brainstorming workshops for early childhood teams to go through their reflective practice. You know, what's working in their classrooms and their play spaces and what's not working. And I this is all about play. So I'd love for you as something a little bit different to get a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen grab a cup of tea if you're ready to go and come back pause come back and then follow through with these questions so the first question that i always ask in regards to play is how would you describe play now play if i looked on google has plenty of different descriptions how i see play is it something that you're in the moment with it's quite a mindful practice when we see children playing they're not worried about what happened yesterday what's happening tomorrow they're in what i call a flow when we're in a flow it's like time passes by and we haven't even realized how long we've been playing for so first question for you and your team is how would you describe play you can pause me throughout this session as you're writing down your notes. doesn't all have to be done today, but these are just some activities and exercises for your team to try and now start to do what I would usually do in a reflective practice workshop. Second question is, how do you feel when you're playing? So for me, I'm quite an active play person. I love board games as well. So when I feel, what I feel when I'm playing is I feel mentally stimulated. I feel physically stimulated. How do you feel when you're playing? Some people, when they're playing, they like to do more of the craft art type play. They might feel calmer, more relaxed, more mindful. You might feel more energetic, more motivated. These questions are how you feel about play. No right or wrong answer. No silly answer. It's exactly how you're feeling about play. So how would you describe how you're feeling when you're engaged in play? I'd also now like you to think of how the children in your service are playing. So if you could write a list of 10 things that are the top play activities for the children in your care, the children in your service. So this might be activities like the climbing frame. <laughs> you can hear the cockatoos in the background having a bit of an answer to this question. Um, it might be the slide, that might be the play space, it might be the swing, the play, the sand pit, the block corner, the train tracks in your service for the top 10 play activities that you're seeing being used. And in regards to these play activities, I then categorize them. Are they sedentary play? So a lot of the children are engaged in blocks and trains and building. That's quite sedentary. They're sitting while they're doing it. Is it rough and tumble play? So you're seeing lots of children crushing their bodies through crush mats, rolling down hills, playing chasey around the yard, trying to describe how they're playing is also what I encourage you to do in this moment because then you can start to see what types of play they need less of or more of. So trying to categorise it, is it more art and craft? Is it more open-ended? Is it more structured? Is it more rough and tumble? Is it more sensory? And we start to see what we need more or less of in that moment. The next question is, what were your three favourite things to do when you were a child? What were your three favourite play activities? This is to try and inspire our mind to open up a little bit more about what we love to do in play. Because as you'll see, a lot of the children who are struggling to engage in play, they're looking to us for motivation, for inspiration. They're looking to us for help with knowing how to play. So we need to also remember how to play. So my favourite things were craft. I loved a knitting Nancy. I loved hummer beads and long stitch. Now, children might not be ready for long stitch, of course, in the early childhood years, but they might love threading pasture onto pipe cleaners, threading beads onto string. That's an early part of needlework. You might also have children who love to do what I used to do, which was play ball games. I loved throwing a ball back and forward from a wall. I loved kicking a ball into a soccer, a soccer net. What did you love to do when you were growing up? It's these smaller games, these older, sorry, games that inspire how we play and how our children play. Another one that I, I provided to my children was jacks. I don't know if you remember them. You throw them up and you try and catch them on the back of your hand. Now, again, a little bit tricky for four and five-year-olds, but modify it. It could be throwing one ball up and catching it back inside your hand or in a cup. We can then teach them about jacks, but they might only have to catch one jack. 
or you can get this larger plastic version of jacks that we used to have back then another one of my favorite games is yahtzee so now it doesn't need to be yahtzee the exact game but can we take more dice games can we roll a dice and throw the ball that amount of times against a wall can we roll a dice and do that amount of rolls down the hill try and get your own play space your own play skills to inspire how you're going to engage the children in play feel free to share these in the comments section as well that'd be amazing what do you feel stopped you from playing now this is about when you were younger why do you feel you stopped playing for me i feel i stopped playing because school became more academic i feel i stopped playing after school because i had homework i also am a child from a traumatic background so i feel i stopped playing because my family couldn't cope with the mess of playing there already was enough mental health issues in the house as it was so having a playful environment was something that i didn't grow up in so what i used to do when i was little is i would go to friends houses and have that exploratory play that beautiful calming space to play i would then get involved in lots of extracurricular sport and although i was learning tennis i was also getting that play out of my tennis lesson by throwing a ball against a wall by seeing how many balls i could throw into the basket i was playing in other settings so what do you feel stopped you from playing because you can see as we become adults it's like we don't know how to play anymore some of us have no idea how to play anymore it's very important to sit in this moment pause me if you need to and start to think about why don't I play anymore what stopped me from playing was it academic pressure was it it became uncool <laughs> was it I got so busy with extracurricular activities because when we know what stopped us we can start to see well what's stopping us now in your classroom now what's stopping you from playing that's my next question what barriers do we have now in our work that are stopping us from playing for me i play every day i go into therapy sessions and i am the play lady i know that the barrier to that is parents sometimes think well you can't be providing therapy if all you're doing is playing all day but playing isn't therapy it can't be that fun there's barriers in the way that we value play, the way we think about play, the way our families are educated around play. So we want to look at the barriers of why you're not playing as much in your environment. Now, I know from the observations that I do in classrooms, it's sometimes feel like you're putting out spot fires. You know, there's a behavior over here that we need to manage. Then there's a behavior over here that we need to manage. We're constantly putting out all these little mini fires. That's what it feels like throughout the day. So that could be the barrier to you playing. Another barrier could be that you're constantly finding this mess is becoming overwhelming in your play space because our children may not be ready for the kindergarten space. They might be throwing the paint or eating the paint instead of painting on the easel. They might be throwing the dice across the room instead of playing the board game. What are your barriers to play? Documentation is a huge one that I hear. Documentation is taking away my time to enjoy play. So how can we take some stress out of that documentation how can we automate it how can we make it less fiddly that documentation so that's what i'd love for you to take back to your team what's stopping you from being able to engage in the play because that's what we get to this job in the first place right we're in this job to engage with children inspire children motivate children play with children but we're stuck with all of this paperwork so how can we as a team delegate the paperwork a little bit more how can we set up more small quick play experiences like a bingo board game like creating a marble tunnel outside how can we bring more play into the day with less mess less stress now in mess what i mean is less things being moved around the classroom you know we set up our beautiful paint station and our board game space but our children are still in those low play schemas so all of a sudden we've lost the dice we've lost the tokens we've lost the paint brushes so we might need to put in some lower level play skills lower level play activities to build children's skill level up first and i'm always here to help you if you need there's the play schema video if you need and i can share it straight away just comment below or message me that you need the play schema video always here to help another activity that another question that i had was what activity would you like to play at work so if you had the time you had the resources one activity that you would like to play at work one activity that from your childhood brings you so much warmth and happiness and joy what would you like to bring in to your space at work 
For me, this includes activities like throwing a ball into a basket, rolling down a hill. If there's no hill, I like to wrap up in a yoga mat and roll down in a yoga mat. I love dancing. I love making music out of anything, pots and a ladle, sticks and a table. I'd love to bring more music into the space if I had more time. So what would you like to do? What activity would you like to bring into work? And then the last question, I know it's been a lot for you, what would you like to play tomorrow? So I really want you to think out of all of this brainstorming that we've done, read back over your notes because hopefully you've paused me a few times throughout this video. If you haven't, go back to question one. Let's do the work to try and plan what would you like to do tomorrow. It's really important that when we come into our role in early childhood, we break it down into small actionable steps. When I look at my role as an exercise physiologist, I can't go for every motor skill all at once. I can't provide the child with every goal and motivate them in every area of their goals all at once. I've got to break it down into small actionable pieces. So one thing you'd like to play tomorrow, please share it with me. I'd love the inspiration because then that inspiration can help someone else and vice versa. I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of a different video. Um, thank you so much for your time and I'll see you online or in person soon. Take care. Bye for now.